Um, how did doing A Convoy change me? I have to admit, doing the A Convoy up to the north in Cebu was never something we um, had planned to do. What had actually happened is we've seen the media, they were talking about, oh, we're sending this here, we're doing this. But the fact was, there was delays, 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 and we're talking weeks. And there's people without water, there's people without food. And I thought we'd had a good business year. So basically, all our spare money, one of the reasons back in the UK, is I spent it all on aid. Um, I bought what we could for food, water, um, matches, candles, um, some medical supplies, and we filled the truck, got other people to donate so we could get more stuff, got other people um, they were doing other convoys and then we all formed up into a large convoy and we headed up to the north of Cebu. Um, things were in high spirits all the way up there. Um, I've got to admit, we travelled up as a group um, and we, we had a, I think the lead vehicle come from a senator. Um, we'd given like a, a disaster relief vehicle to lead the convoy which could stop traffic and whatever to keep the convoy moving. When we when we got out of the Cebu city and out the other heading north, there was a bit of a, a stop period where everybody stopped for a photo because it's the last time everybody would be together. Because there was multiple convoys going up at the same time. Um, and it was a group group effort because you know once the aid started you you just get on with it and you're not going to stop for a photo up. So that was interesting because I wasn't expecting to do that because me I'm just like let's get on with it you know I'm not you probably know this I'm not in many photos because I don't really I'm not a photo person I'm not photogenic um, I've got a face for radio <laughs> but anyway the uh, after heading up the the further north we go, we started to see people lining the, the, the roads. Um, every telegraph pole was down, every power line was down. Houses had been completely wiped out. Trees had been snapped in half. Um, there was just total devastation. You know, you could see every tree wiped out, you know, as you're driving along. There's nothing left. And the further you got, the more worse it seemed to get, and the more people that were there. You know, because we, you know, the, I, I can't remember how far it was. That's probably about I don't know how many hours. We, you know, we we drove all the way up to a place called Tin Dog, but all the way up there, there was like kids lining the the roads, um, young mothers, and. Most houses seem to have lost them at, at minimum its roof. Um, at worst, the whole thing has collapsed and completely wiped out. Um, but the further you got up, you started to realize that the bit that wasn't being pushed in the media was that Filipinos were helping Filipinos. Um, there was businesses donated all the vehicles, donated aid, donated staff, you know, and the staff, well I say donated staff, the staff had donated the time um, to take the stuff themselves. They were delivering aid direct. Um, there was people driving, filling their car up and driving north to give aid to people by themselves. None of this was in the media. As a, to me that was unfair on the people because um, they were doing more than the government was at that time. Um, I'm not expecting everybody to get a little bad, but what it would have been nice that somebody actually turned around and said, look, yeah, these people are trying to help themselves. They're not, they're not sitting at the side of the road, like, you know, just expecting things to be done for them. Um, Filipinos were trying to do as much as they could for themselves 
without government assistance. The government were also involved in many things, um, but there's a lot of politics. I'm not even going to discuss that because there's been made a, an absolute sham in the media itself um, about what goes on. So I'm not going to get even touch on that subject. But what I will say is when we got to each drop-off point that we're dropping food, people were quiet. Um, they didn't complain. And basically they just queued up and took what was for them. Um, there was no grumbling, no arguing, nothing. Um, it's a bit of a humbling experience because these people have nothing left. They, you know, house is gone, they've got no water, they've got no food, they've got no, they've got no home. The livelihood's been wiped out because when all the banana trees and everything go, that's their food as well. That's also their income, you know, for, for a lot of these people. Um, but when we got to Tin Dog, Tin Dog was a different scenario because the other the guys previously were like farm workers. Um, they were just fields and fields and fields. You know, there, there was just lots and lots of, you know, the crops didn't seem too bad because a lot of sugar cane and stuff. So I think the initial problems with their, those guys is getting water, getting food, getting their houses back up and they'll be functional. But Tindal was wiped out. It looked like um, a Holocaust, you know. It, it, you know, it looked like uh, it'd been hit by um, the wave after a nuclear explosion, where it just pulled all the roofs off, buildings had collapsed, the, the schools were destroyed. There was just n nothing left. But as we come round this corner with the trucks, there was just I don't know how many thousands of people were there. Um, you know, it was loud because they were all having to queue up and everything else. But where it was a bit bizarre was um, people turn around and are taking their stuff quietly, but smiling and saying thank you. That was a little bit weird, you know, considering the problems they went through. Um, they took the time to thank you for helping. Uh, which is a little bit odd for me because, you know, the thoughts are not of themselves. Um, but one of the things that came out was, it was for the people, yeah, it was important for them to know they weren't forgotten. Um, And that, that was quite an important bit for me. You know, because a lot of the AIDS stuff you see with Africa, it's been going on for since the 80s and blah, blah. You're thinking, what has changed? What's been going on? There's problems with it. But what I could see with this was the fact is these people had expected nothing. They expected to be let down by their government. But being there and they they were just so thankful um, that was a little bit bizarre because <laughs> I was the only white guy as well. <laughs> so uh, having hundreds and hundreds of people <laughs> you know uh, every time somebody walked past they said thank you they smiled thank me and they're thanking me personally <laughs> but you know this this is not all my effort this is a group effort even um, the effort within for our aid okay I funded a lot of it but at the same time my staff gave up their time at the same time the local baron guy loaned me the vehicle um, and the driver and it was just a bit you know there's too, too much focus on selfishness um, that's, that's all I can define by the media. There's so much political nonsense where people are like sticking their names on bags and stuff and people just like getting photos with people in disaster zones for political media. Yeah, it's the stuff that makes me vomit. Um, I didn't do it for fame. I did it because people needed help. Uh, 
that that's what bugs me most is a lot of the aid that could have gone to those people those people parading around as if it was a campaign trail and that's very sad okay thanks for watching